Well, proof and evidence require judgment. Proof causes judgment from other people generally. And that is not faith. Our faith is not dependent on what we prove ourselves to other people. Uh, Jesus walks into this town and they say, we want a sign. In other words, they're saying, we want, to, we want you to prove who you are. And Jesus says, no, not going to happen. In fact, Jesus calls a couple situations out. And he talks about people who you would not expect to be repentant and following God's law. And then he goes on to say, they listened to Jonah. They listened to Solomon. But he says, there's one greater here now. And who's he talking about? Well, he's talking about himself. Because he is obviously the only begotten son of God. He is going to, in a short period of time from this discussion, going to be crucified and killed to pay the price for our sins. Unfortunately, it does not stop there. He is raised from the dead by the glory of God to give us eternal life and to give us hope in eternity. So Jesus is telling them, if you're looking for a sign, if you're looking for proof, don't. Place your faith in me. Extend your faith. And faith is a simple act of believing that which you know to be true. You're not going to believe a lie very long. You might if you're deceived for a short period of time. But you will not believe a lie very long if you have any ability to discern proof and evidence. Jesus says, believe me. It's really, really interesting because in the last part of the book of the Gospel of John, Jesus has been resurrected. And most of the apostles and disciples have seen him already, except for Thomas. Except for Thomas. And of course, we know the story of doubting Thomas. And it's very interesting. I'd like to read it to you just so that you can get it in context and understand again what evidence and proof really don't need to be there. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, place your finger here and see my hands and take your hand and put it into my side and do not continue in disbelief, but be a believer. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you now believed? Blessed are those who did not see and yet believe. And this is really the issue of our faith and understanding the power and the extension and the need for faith and faith alone. We are not saved by what we do. We are not saved by the evidence, even though there is evidence. We are saved by our faith. Thomas was the one kind of Lone Ranger exception to all of that because he had said earlier, unless I see it for myself, I, I, no thank you guys. I, I know what reality is, is what Thomas was saying. And Jesus appeared to him miraculously. He didn't even walk through the door, just standing there. And they knew that. Now, I, I can only imagine that probably floored a bunch of people in that room. And then he approaches Thomas who has been doubting all along the resurrection. And now he knows. And the words that came from Thomas's mouth must be the same words that come from us. When we come to know Christ as our personal Savior, my Lord and my God. For Jesus is God in the flesh. And we have to understand that. We have to believe that by faith. Because we don't have any videotapes. We do have God's word and we have the accounts. And we have archaeology that helps an awful lot. But all of that could be laid aside and you could still place your faith without any proof, without any evidence in Jesus Christ. And you would still be a Christian. What are we going to take home with this? Well, very clearly, faith does not demand evidence. Faith that does demand evidence is not real faith. Faith that does not demand evidence is 
real faith. In other words, we don't base it on what we can see, feel, touch, smell, taste. We don't base it on whether or not that book that we've been reading is convincing enough. We base it on our need to have a Savior and to be forgiven of our sins and to be cleansed so that we can have eternal life with Him. That's faith. It really has nothing to do with evidence. And Jesus should not have to prove anything to us. He should not have to give us any signs other than to know that He loves us so much that He would die on a cross for us and shed His blood that we might have eternal life. That's what Jesus was pointing to when he said someone greater than Solomon, someone greater than Jonah, is here. And that is Jesus Christ, our Savior.